Let's make your text effectors editable. Today we're going to be talking about text effectors and more specifically, how we can create text that we can go in and edit after the fact. A couple months ago, I shared this USF project and I got asked about how I created the text within it. So that's what I want to dive into today and show you how to build this out so you can make it editable. So when I built out this project, the goal was to hand it off to the internal team and allow them to continue to iterate on it so they could keep changing out the text for their needs. So before we dive in, I just want to say thank you for watching. And if you haven't liked or subscribed yet, please do so and share it with a friend or colleague so that they can benefit from this as well. So with that being said, let's hop in. So I go up to my text tool and I'm going to click in here and we're going to type Baller Effects. Oops, if I can type, I'm going to double click on it and let me switch this to fill. Increase this, let's say 250. And I'm going to center it right in the middle. All right, so we're going to be using text effectors here. So let's twirl open our text layer and twirl open text. And we have our source text in here, path options and whatnot. But what we need is to go over here to this animate play button. And once we click on that, we have a ton of properties that we can use for our text effectors. So for this one, I'm going to use, I'm going to start with position and we can add as many of these as we would like. So what I usually like to do is go under here, go under advanced and change this to index. Because a lot of the times when, I, when I'm building with text effectors, I'm going to be creating in a way that allows me to change the text. So once the character length changes here, I have expressions that I can write in order to drive the full length of the text so that everything appears as it does as I set it up. So with each property here, we can make an adjustment. So for position, I'm going to start by dragging this down. It's going to start off the screen. Let's just say 650. So if I set a keyframe here, go a little bit down, set another keyframe down here and change this to eight. And my text is going to appear. So as I scroll back, you see that our text animates on. So if I stretch that out a little bit, we get this. All right, so the problem with putting the keyframes right on start is that we are hard coding the final number into the start. So if we were to change this to say motion design, you can see that when I go back to the beginning here, only the eight characters that we have put into this linear animation is going to are going to show up or do what we want it to do. So that's why I I, I don't like using keyframes right on start and end for most of what I do. So let me go ahead and undo this. I'm going to go to the beginning here and let's just turn off the stopwatch. So what I like to do is outsource my keyframes. And what I mean by that is I have my text layer, go into effects controls, right click, expression controls, and we're going to add a slider. And I just call this anim for animation. And I'm going to put my controls on here. So if I select, if I just click on this, set my keyframe at zero and go out to 30 frames and change this to 100. Nothing happens because I need to tie my start to this animated slider. So if I hit U, you can see these are pulled up. All right, so let me twirl open my text again. And again, this is on position. It's just affecting the Y position here. So I'm gonna click on end first. So if I alt click on end, I'm going to pick whip up here to the source text and just add dot length. And when I click off, it's automatically going to pull the character length of the text. So if I change the text, say motion, 
you can see the numbers counting up here. D E S I N G N. So there's 13 characters there. All right, so I'm going to switch it back to Baller FX. All right. So now I'm going to write a linear expression on the start keyframe here. So I'll click on the start, and we're going to call this driver. And the driver is going to be our slider that we created here. Semicolon, and then it's driver min. And this is going to be the start and the end. So zero and driver max is going to equal 100. And then we need to say when this driver, when this slider goes from zero to 100, my two keyframes down here, what do we want the start position to go from? So the passenger min equals zero. We're starting at zero for every single one. And then the passenger max, what do we want it to end at? We want to pick whip to our end here because that's going to be variable based on the length of the text. So if I had a semicolon there, now I just need to call this up into a linear expression. And you just need to type in, you can double click, copy and paste if you want, comma in between each one, or comma, you can start typing and just select whichever one populates. So now, since we're, we're at 100 on this animated slider, we're at 8. So if I start to drag this back, you're going to start to see the same animation that we had earlier when we had the those keyframes up here. But now we have a lot more control over these keyframes down here. So I can hit F9 and go in here, select this, and make this ease really strong. So we can we have a lot more control over over how things come in when we do it this way. So I can make it super tight. So it starts slow and comes in basically all at once, but has a slow intro and outro. And you can play around with that as much as you want. So let's say we want to add another animator. You can add within. Let's see if I add opacity. Set opacity to zero. And the only downside of this is that it's all following the same keyframes. So I'm going to delete that. And I'm going to go back up to this animate and create opacity here. And now when I change this to zero, I have control of everything here. So I'm going to switch this to index, zero to eight. And then I'm actually going to twirl down my initial range selector here. And I can pull this up here. So I can just copy, copy expression only, and paste this here, because the length is going to be the same. And it's, I want it to read off of the source text. But for start, instead of rewriting a linear expression, I'm going to pick whip up to this start. But I want to offset my driver. So the way I'm going to do that is by going here and adding a dot value at time, time minus point 0.1. So my opacity is going to be point 0.1 seconds behind the position. Now, I'm going to need to adjust this because everything comes on so quick. So I want to make this smaller. What about point 0.03? I kind of want to see Let me adjust this so we can see this a little bit better. Maybe we do this. So by offsetting how my opacity comes in, I can also change this to time plus 0.03. The challenge is that it's off the screen. 
So the opacity is going to come in. The opacity is going to turn on the layer before it comes into the screen. So you can play around with with offsetting all these times and by linking every t everything together this way. Let me click on this and I'm going to add, let's say we want to change the fill color RGB. All right, and then I'm going to delete opacity. So my fill color is going to be driven by this time minus let's make this 0.05. So now everything comes in and then it fades off there. So you can have it come in with one color and then once it lands it switches to the under underlay color. So if I double click on here, you can see my fill is white. And your character panel is what's going to drive the base color here. So if I were to change this to blue, you can have it come in red, and then it ends up on blue. So know that your base color is always driven by your character panel up here, unless you want to do another animator and have it driven and have it be the base down here if you want a lot a little bit more control over that or you want to change it and so you can see that everything is coming in here kind of dissolving in and it's changing from red to blue and in between before it gets there with the transition over the red is losing opacity so it's turning into a purpley color because the red and blue are mixing a little bit before it lands on blue. So the way that you can fix this is by using another expression called math.round and I need to delete this last parentheses and put it at the end here and make sure this encapsulates the whole thing. And what that's going to do is it's going to round to the nearest number. So as this is coming through, it's going to be full color until it hits. And there's no dissolve in between. It goes from one color straight to the other. So now that you have a better understanding of how these animators work, what happens if we duplicate this and move it up? everything is going to move together. If I double click this and I turn off the fill and I turn on the stroke, there you go. But also notice that my color's not changing on this and that is because my animator two here, I chose fill color so if I go back in here and I go add property, stroke color, RGB, and I delete fill color, there we go. And our stroke is set to this white. So all I would need to do is select this and change that to blue. So now we have everything looking the same. So it's acting like this is pushing this up. And what happens if I page down, because I'm on a PC, uh, just push it down into uh, in space here a little bit. You get a little bit of overlap. Maybe you just want one frame there, just so that it doesn't quite, so it's like it's getting pushed up, but it's still overlapping a little there. You can play with play with that, but just trying to give you some different ideas on how to create a little bit more fun and dynamic text. Because again, if I were to go in and change the text, let's first link these two. So I'm going to take my top layer, pick whip down to my bottom layer, source text. So we have the same. And I'm going to change this to tutorials. And you can see this automatically updated because it's reading from this one. And the although the text link changed, 
we still get the same animation that we had before. Full on. So, go ahead, play around, have fun with the animation text effectors and outsource your keyframes so that you can freely change up the length of the text and adjust it on the fly.